Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The topic uh, we discuss now is the acute renal failure or ARF. Uh, we will uh, discuss it more from the pathological perspective and the clinical perspective obviously will be uh, discussed with uh, the nephrologist and in a more of a seminar format. Uh, but this acute renal failure we will go step by step to see that what happens inside the kidney which causes acute renal failure. Now what is acute renal failure? So most important component that you must understand the definition of acute renal failure is the inability of the kidney to maintain homeostasis leading to a build up of nitrogenous wastes. So obviously there are biochemical parameters which we can see in the patient serum with which we have an indication that kidney is not functioning. There may be different to renal insufficiency where kidney function is deranged but can still support life. So there may be partial failure which is uh, still uh, have biochemical parameters or clinical parameters not much deranged but still there may be abnormality in the renal function. And the exact biochemical clinical definition is not clear that way. So there are a lot of studies and a lot of definition. But main thing is that that when the kidney functions is not tenable or not doing properly and leading to certain biochemical and clinical changes and also sometimes at subclinical level it can have a renal failure. If it is a very acute one that is the duration is short in terms of days and week. So then we will call it acute renal failure. Now it, it can it can occur over hours and days. The laboratory definition is uh, much more clear but we can diagnose pathologically is increase in the baseline creatinine of more than 50 percent. So say for example a person's baseline creatinine is 1.2 milligram percent and then within two days if it becomes see 2.4 milligram percent definitely that is an acute renal failure. The decrease in creatinine clearance more than 50 percent and that is related to decrease in the glomerular filtration rate, deterioration of the renal functions which requires the dialysis. So these are the different the laboratory definition of the acute renal failure. Now clinically we can look at it in a very different way. The patient may come to the OPD without any urine formation. So there is no urine output which is even the less than 100 ml per 24 hours. So we clinically tell this is an anuria, then it, it can have less than 500 ml and some people say that is less than 400 ml of urine output that is in, in a per day or less than 20 milliliter of urine per hour then we call it oliguria. And then sometimes in the recovery stage of acute tubular injury the person can have much more urine formation because tubular absorption is defective. So in that case patient may present with a polyuria, there is more urine formation, there is more than 2.5 liter per 24 hours. Now the cause of acute renal failure may be uh, usually classically classified in, in under three heading, one is pre-renal where see the say for example the blood supply is of the kidney is very low, then obviously the filtration volume will be low and that will cause the renal failure. We will be more focusing on the intrinsic cause that is the renal cause which is the structural cause and we will be talking about it. And then it may be post renal also where there will be obstruction in the ureter or the lower renal tract which can lead to acute renal failure. Now this will be discussed by the nephrologist but just to mention so acute renal failure obviously when you try to work up we try to see whether it is a pre renal, it is a renal or intrinsic or post renal. If it is intrinsic, we have to see whether it is a tubular interstitial problem or it is a glomerular problem, glomerular disease 
and if it is a glomerular disease, we can try to further classify it as a primary and secondary glomerular disease, which we have already discussed in our classes of glomerular nephritis. Now, <coughs> this is the same thing I think we are repeating again. Prerenal, I have told you, inadequate perfusion, and uh, it can happen due to uh, the severe uh, injury or trauma, then uh, uh, hemorrhage, uh, dehydration, and all. And then we have renal cause, this is acute renal failure, despite the perfusion and excretion, those functions are uh, may be fine, but then you have a renal uh, problem, renal disease which is causing acute renal failure. We will further elaborate on that. And post renal, obviously, lower renal tract is the one where you have to check it. Now, <coughs> this table gives you more clear uh, view. So, here we have uh, important pre renal, renal, and post renal cause. So, in prerenal absolute hypovolemia and relative hypovolemia and reduced cardiac output and renovascular occlusion. So, these may the main cause of the prerenal uh, acutrenal failure. Renal it may be glomerular, tubular, interstitial or vascular. These are the four compartment of the kidney may get affected and post renal obviously anatomically it may be pelvic elicial region obstruction, ureteric. Uh, the VUJ or the bladder neck obstruction and bladder neck urethral obstruction. So, so basically um, these are the main cause of this acutrenal failure. Now, pre-renal I think just to uh, summarize, decreased renal perfusion without renal cellular injury in the kidney, 70 percent of the community acquired cases, it, it can occur in uh, several situations. So, we may not go into the detail and uh, in the seminar maybe uh, you can listen more about it. Now, we will focus on these acute ARF due to renal cause. So, acute tubular necrosis is one of the very important cause of acute renal failure and uh, it may be mainly three cause, maybe either ischemic, toxic or there may be other intrinsic tubular factor which can lead to acute tubular necrosis. Acute interstitial necrosis uh, or uh, interstitial inflammation in edema that is um, acute interstitial injury and then glomerular nephritis already we have discussed earlier. Now, acute tubular necrosis I think in this uh, <coughs> Uh, talk, we will uh, elaborate because usually in the glomerular nephritis and interstitial nephritis, this component we have not discussed in details. So, the it is the commonest cause of renal failure and there is acute diminution or loss of renal function and usually it is, re is results from destruction or dysfunction of the tubular epithelial cells. Now, ischemia that can cause acute tubular necrosis, there may be different causes of ischemia say vascular disease like polyarteritis nodosa, malignant hypertension, hemolytic immunic syndrome or there is maybe some decrease in effective circulating blood volume inside the kidney. And direct toxic injury to the tubules that can happen secondary to the drugs, there are several tubular toxic drugs, radio contrast dyes, heavy metals, myoglobin, hemoglobin and radiation. Now, you can have mismatched blood transfusion, then also it can cause tubular injury. Now, acute tubular stain nephritis, it may be due to hypersensitivity reaction to the drug and urinary drug obstruction also can occur in uh, I told you the BPH, tumors and blood clot and other causes. Now, pathogenesis of acute tubular injury. In case of ischemia, there is structural and functional alteration in the epithelial cells. So, what happens if there is a ischemia to any cell? It follows the same principle of general pathology. So, initially there will be swelling of the cell then there will be loss of brass border, particularly proximal tubular epithelial cells and followed by blabbing of these uh, submembranous region, loss of polarity, cell determinant, detachment, necrosis and apoptosis. So, this is leading to these loss of these cells, but in these if you see the injury, different grades of injury can cause the reversibility and irreversibility of the cell damage. And while in the ischemia, there is also depletion of this ATP. And depletion of the ATP cause accumulation of the intracellular calcium, then activation of the proteases particularly calpane and phospholipases, then that causes cytoskeletal disruption and damage to the membrane. So, in this area I have showed you the structural changes and in this area in, in these few lines I am mentioning the molecular mechanism which causes the structural changes. And then finally, all this leads to generation of the reactive oxygen species and activation of caspases, 
which causes apoptosis as well as necrosis of these tubular epithelial cells. So, this is the pathogenesis of tubular injury secondary to ischemia. Now, this gives you this diagram gives you a <coughs> more interconnected mechanism what happens in ischemia. In case of ischemia obviously, there is endothelial dysfunction, there will be more vasoconstriction, renal angiotensin system become more activated resulting is increase in endothelin, decrease in nitric oxide and increase in prostaglandin I2. So, and then also ischemia causes the tubular cell injury and the tubular cell injury again it in further there is decrease in the oxygen perfusion to the outer medulla which gives rise to more vasoconstriction. In the tubular injury also we can look into the reversible phase and irreversible phase. In the reversible phase you have got the mild changes like loss of polarity, detachment of the some cells and in case of loss of polarity you sometimes get tubular dysfunction because there is increase in uh, sodium delivered in the distal tubules because tu normal tubular reabsorption of water and electrolyte gets disturbed and that causes increased tubular glomerular feedback and that actually causes reduced glomerular filtration rate. Whereas, if there is detachment of the tubular epithelial cells is more prominent that is more cells get detached then the reversibility actually decreases it from reversible phase it goes to irreversible phase. In irreversible acute tubular necrosis most of the cells undergoes necrosis and apoptosis and this actually is said in the lumen and they form obstruction by forming the cellular cast and that causes increase in intratubular pressure and finally, that causes reduction in the glomerular filtration rate. And similarly, there may be a tubular back leak or tubular back flow and all this leads to oliguria and sometimes anuria. So, this is the very clear or more or less clear picture of what happens in ischemic acute tubular necrosis. Now, so the, the key event in acute tubular necrosis is the tubular injury and also disturbance in the blood flow. The tubular injury is sensitive due to the change the charge selective nature of the tubular epithelial cells ability to concentrate substance in the tubule and also sensitive to ischemia. So, which I have explained in that diagram and the disturbance on the blood flow leads to ischemic disease it causes the reduced in uh, glomerular filtration rate damage to the tubular epithelial cells in the medulla. Now, ATN obviously, is, is divided into three phases so far as the pathobiology is concerned the first phase is initiation phase that usually within 36 hours of the initiation of these uh, factors which causes the tubular injury and this insulting event with subsequent slight oliguria and beginning of azotemia. So, the changes are quite mild in the initiation phase. Then comes the maintenance phase where there is a sustained decrease in the output of the urine that may be 40 to 400 ml per day and their electrolyte imbalance because tubular dysfunction has started and it is associated with development of edema. And in this situation the patient can be managed by the uh, treatment of the fluid control and electrolyte control. And then finally, if the injury is, is no more progressive then the recovery occurs and in the recovery phase there is steady increase in the urine output subsequent polyuria as I explained initially an increase in susceptibility to the infection and also hypokalemia due to excessive diuresis. Because in the recovery phase also the full tubular function is still yet to be recovered. So, there is a lot of functional disturbances leading to sometimes less water absorption and also abnormal electrolyte reabsorption. If the patient survives the cause of acute tubular necrosis they usually regain normal renal function within few weeks. Now, the <coughs> This structurally what I have already told you now this the, the, uh, uh, the schematic diagram shows you that different parts of the tubule has got different kind of metabolic activity and different kind of absorption and secretion activity. And that is why their oxygen requirement is also very very variable like proximal tubular epithelial cells are most metabolically active cells and that is why they are very vulnerable to ischemia. So, if we compare the different segments of the proximal tubule also their susceptibility to injury is also very variable. Similarly, for a toxin the toxins also sometimes 
injure see particular segment of the tubule much more in comparison to the other segment of the tubule. That is why you have to understand that in ischemic type of injury and toxic type of injury the segment of the tubules which are which gets involved are different and sometimes there are certain features if we see that there is more um, injury to this the proximal convoluted tubule with widespread with the the uh, loop of Henle and uh, then it is more severe kind of injury may, may indicate a toxic injury whereas if we get the skip zone injury that is some part of these uh, proximal tubules and some part of this loop of Henle's are more affected than the other parts then we can think of the the type of injury may be more of a ischemic injury. Now, this is the typical uh, photomicrograph of the kidney biopsy which is uh, showing you acute tubular necrosis. If you see these tubules hardly you see the normal tubular epithelial cells and there is only few flattened epithelial cells with hyperchromatic nuclei are seen and these are these regenerating tubular epithelial cells. Most of the tubular cell epithelial cells are getting shed and here you can see that the shedding tubular epithelial cells and you can see them in the lumen and here you can see some of the cast in the cast also these epithelial cells are getting embedded. So, so this is the typical picture of the acute tubular necrosis, thank you.